Aren't we told all the time that the Chinese people are supposed to be oppressed and unable to protest and utterly broken by the tyrannical Chinese government? Hi, hello and welcome to another video. If you are one of the 2.4 million people who have seen this reporting by Chuck Callisto on Twitter, you may be wondering how on earth did 40 Chinese banks vanish all of a sudden and what it really means for the global economy. As we have been warned, the consequences could be huge. And you will be right to be concerned if you read something like that, right? However, you would also be misinformed about what really took place and the scope of the consequences of what took place. So, let's dive in on today's video explaining how China handles these type of situations. First of all, as The Economist writes here, the banks did not really vanish. They were absorbed into bigger ones. In other words, the liability for the money that was owed or lent has been transferred to another larger bank. This is very common procedure in financial entities. You can see here two things that are important. First, that these are all small banks in one single province, Liaoning, which basically offer banking services to farmers and people in rural areas. By definition, these are not high stakes financial institutions. They are instead a way for people in those less developed areas of the province to get to do some basic banking, such as getting some loans or receive payments or salaries, and more importantly nowadays, to connect to the digital wallets that are so commonly used in the country. Liaoning farmers are not really purchasing sophisticated financial products that may put the whole system at risk, like we saw during the subprime mortgage debacle of 2008 in the United States far from that. Due to the nature of their operation, these banks are not designed to be necessarily or particularly profitable. They're actually designed to be convenient and affordable banking for farmers. Now, the second important aspect to keep in mind is how the banks were handled. A new bank was set up, the Liaoning Rural Commercial Bank, which was created with the specific purpose of consolidating all 40 banks into a larger, more efficient and robust organization. This scheme is also being implemented in other areas of the country, since the incorporation of these smaller banks into a larger one is much more cost-effective, and a lot of the banking that is done today can be done on mobile phones, so the convenience is now in people's pocket. Now, in June this year, we also saw Western media posts regarding the failure of yet another bank, this time the Jiangxi Bank, since several customers were seen on videos organizing a protest at the bank's doors. Now, on this one, I would like to say two things. Aren't we told all the time that the Chinese people are supposed to be oppressed and unable to protest and utterly broken by the tyrannical Chinese government? So how come these people come here protesting? Something is not adding up, right? They seem to be free enough to come banging at doors when they feel they have been wrong. But who am I to say? Some of you already knew that this is just bollocks, but let's continue with our topic. After social media, uh, many of these shadowy Falun Gong accounts on Twitter and YouTube that do nothing but disparage China, were running with this story of the protest in Jiangxi, the highly reputable Biling Dengwan informed the public that this scandal was caused by a fund called Nanchang Minering Registration Center, which was basically a P2P scam operation that actually had some impact in society. This center has a bank account with the Jiangxi Bank, and the victims of the scam went to the offices to make trouble in light of their misfortune. Now, in addition, the bank made a statement saying that they continue to operate normally and that the state of their deposits and withdrawals is of no concern to the general public. So back to the original post by Chuck Callisto, who is evidently peddling financial fears. God knows why. Maybe he sells crypto. Maybe he sells gold. I don't know. But to Mr. Callisto, I would like to offer a parallel. 
According to FDIC, the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, since the year 2000, 569 banks in the U.S. have failed. Some big and some small. In fact, some really, really big like this one right here. Silicon Valley Bank collapsed in 2023. SVV's collapse marked the second largest bank failure in U.S. history after Washington Mutual in 2008. And the U.S. is still standing. But 40 small rural Chinese banks vanishing <laughs> means that China is collapsing and there will be severe consequences for the global economy. Right, Mr. Callisto? Remember, guys, Small banks collapse in the U.S. all the time. There is a link in the description of this video to the latest 15 U.S. banks that have collapsed. And as you can see here, some of them have assets and deposits in the few dozen million U.S. dollars. What are the chances that these banks will affect the global economy? But more importantly, Mr. Chuck, what happens to these banks? They get absorbed. As you can see, they are taken over by other banks and things get worked out. So friends, once again, we are being misled by media like The Economist when they tell us that these small rural banks vanished instead of what really happened, that they were consolidated under a larger bank. And we are subject to fear-mongering by internet pundits like Mr. Callisto, telling us that the world economy is in danger because of these small banks. Neither of them is accurate. Okay, guys, that's all the time we have for today. Thank you so much for watching this video. And as always, if you liked it, give it a thumbs up. And if you like the content on my channel, consider subscribing. And if you want to support the work that I do, you know what to do. There's a link in the description where you can buy me a coffee or you can use the QR code on the screen. And until I see you again, Take it easy and bye for now.